Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck with me, Frank Baltiers, where step by step, I show you how you can build your own food truck or your own food trailer from scratch on all the previous videos to this. But in today's video, I wanted to just do a quick walk around so you guys can see all the items that I have used to build a food truck. I did make a spreadsheet that I list every item by itself. And at one point, just, just so we're clear, everybody knows, um, at one point in the beginning when I first started uploading these videos, I made it available for free, but now there's a very, very small charge. Um, and you guys can email me rolling burritos food truck at gmail.com. I'll give you the details, or you can buy the ebook. The ebook is out, it comes with the spreadsheet. Uh, the only reason I say this is because I get a lot of questions and a lot of comments of people that are interested in the spreadsheet. And maybe you guys saw an older video that said uh, I used to give it away for free. So I just want to make sure that we're 100% clear on that and there's no confusion that it used to be, but it no longer is. Uh, it's just it's just a little bit of time and there's always questions that come with the spreadsheet. So I want to make sure that at least uh, we have that understanding and how that comes. So again, I'm Frank Baltieris. But before we walk go into the trailer, I do want to plug it in because it's kind of dark in there. So I want to make sure that if we're going to do a walk around, we get some lights in there. And something that I do, this is just something that I've done personally. You can make it yourself. Everything that I show you is pretty much DIY. So you take a regular extension cord just like this or just like this. The difference between these two extension cords obviously is the color. And the other one is the end. So everything that I link uh, in the description here, I try to put as many parts as the description allows to be able to have access for you guys so you guys can get a quick shopping experience through Amazon because they are Amazon paid affiliate links. So if you guys use those to support the channel, I do appreciate it very much because I make these videos for you guys. So this guy right here, if you guys can see it's a little bit bigger than this one in size and it has like almost a little spike. This one is for a 50 amp generator inlet box. This is what powers up your um, trailer or your truck and it usually comes from the generator. There's a 50 amp one, which is one of my favorites. I do like the 50 amp one just because it's a little bit more sturdy and it looks a little bit bigger and beefier, so to speak. This one's a 30 amp. This is what I actually have in my truck because this is the first one that I ever built. So there's a 30 amp. So if you guys, uh, if, if one's out of stock and you need just 30 amps, just order the 30 amps. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just what I used and I just never had a reason to change it. So mine's a Reliance 30 amp. This is a Reliance 50 amp. And this is my generator, the Westinghouse, which pushes about 29.8 amps. How you find the amps is you take the watts, which right here are 4,500. That's 4,500 when it first starts. I think it levels off at about 3,700 um, watts. And you divide that by 120, because this pushes 120 power. I don't run anything that's 240. If you guys do, then obviously use 240 and buy the generator that can push 240. That's a major key element right there. Make sure that the generator can handle 240 power. 240 power. If you don't know what that is, make sure that you Google that. I do do electrical work. That's what I do. But this is not the video to explain what's 120, what's 240. You guys can pretty much do that on your own time. But what we do here is we're going to connect this one. If you can come right here, I'm going to show you. It's a quick and easy plug-in. So we take our Reliance plug right here, and then we just plug it right in. We just take it, and then it twists right on. And then I'm going to take two seconds. You guys are going to wait right here. I'm going to plug it in to the house and then we're going to get some lights in the trailer. Before we go inside, I want to co cover a couple things that are on the outside. Number one is a propane. I do use propane cooking equipment. I don't use electrical cooking equipment. So I have two 30 pound tanks right up here. And back here, I have a changeover regulator and that works if one propane tank goes empty, you just flip a little switch to the right and then it would power up the right one and vice versa, it goes to the left one. So that's how I have this. At the bottom, I have a uh, propane tank, uh, tray that just holds it into place with this little guy right here. You just twist it. And if you want to take out the tanks, obviously lefty loosey, righty tighty. And then this will loosen this guy up and then you can take, and then you can take out the tanks, fill them up, change them out, whatever you want to do. That's how this works. And it works perfectly in this type of tongue. This is a Cargo Mate Blazer 7x16 trailer with a 6 foot 5 interior height. If we come right over here, you guys can see my door is wrapped in stainless steel. This trailer right here, I did everything in stainless steel. And inside, I'm going to show you the three materials that I would recommend if you guys are going to build your own trailer again, which ones I would use. Right here, I get this question quite a bit, and I want to make sure I cover this right now. 
the window and the shirt the serving shelf right here which this one you just lift it up like that Ooh, there's water in there rain here yesterday this guy right here both of these i found them and i bought them and i have continued to buy them from all the trailers that i've built i built about six of them now from jr aluminum and they're in ohio so make sure if you want to use them this is a uh, model i think 23x i believe it has um look a window right there it has two little windows and so far it's all inclusive so you don't have to buy like the the struts the shocks that go with it it has lights that go around it has the two lights that i have right here and i'm going to power it on right now so you guys can see it hopefully it turns on there's the inside and then there's the outside lights just like that so with that let's walk right inside i'm going to show you guys what we're working with here as i said this is one of my first trailers that i ever built so i, ha I had a lot of uh uh, as they call trial and error learning so a lot of things that I saw on here that I've improved throughout the six trailers that I've built oh talking about the generator remember I told you guys that you need a plug so this I made this myself as well this is tang gauge wire because tang gauge wire copper copper whew, I might lost my voice there pushes 30 amps of power it has to be copper tang gauge pushes 30 amps of power and this is the little plug that you can buy for the generator. This is specific for the Westinghouse generator. Every generator might be a little bit different, so make sure that you look at it and you get the proper plug for the generator that you're using. Again, this one's that 30 amp one that connects straight to the inlet box that I showed you where we plug this in so we can have some power in here, some lights. So we're gonna go from right, Go wrap around and then we're gonna just finish up at the door again. So I'm gonna give you a quick grand tour and talk a little bit more of what we have going on and how the overview maybe can answer some of the questions that you have. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this is a freebie, so you don't have to buy the spreadsheet if you don't want to. I always recommend people to go through the videos so you guys don't have to buy anything and purchase anything. If you guys don't want to, I'm not here to make a business out of selling you guys a spreadsheet or an ebook. I just wanna help you guys out as much as I can for free. So right here. A lot of the parts that I bought are from Websterons, Amazon, and different Google links or Google websites that you just kind of Google the product name and then that works right there. We got some geese walking around here. So on here, as I mentioned, my first original trailer complete out of stainless steel. I found these real cheap. Um, they were like $70, $80 a sheet. This was back in 2019, so a long time ago. So this guy, a soap dispenser, they're going to ask for it at the health department. From Webstaurant right here actually I have a towel dispenser and I took it off because I wanted a one of I wanted a different style one so that's where this goes right here uh, this right here is a switch for my water pump which I'm gonna show you right now so this is just to make sure that when I want to have water I just have to click the switch I don't have to plug it in plug it out this is for my gloves found that in Webstaurant as well along with the gloves found those on Webstaurant as well the sink this one specifically, I found it in Webstaurant, but I do have a link where it's somewhat of a similar um, sync from Amazon. So if you guys buy it again from the Amazon paid affiliate links, I do appreciate that assistance and that support right there. So that's this hand sink right here. This one has a 15 inch bowl. So just so you know, it, has, it measures 15 inches from left to right. That's what my health department requires. Make sure that you check with your health department all the requirements that they have. Usually if you go to the website, you Google, like for me, it'd be DuPage County mobile vendors requirement. And that tells you uh, almost step by step how you can, what are the things that you need for your food truck or your food or your mobile vending cart or whatever you do. If we go down here, you have your class ABC. And then this guy is a class K uh, fire extinguisher. So you need both of those right there. The fire department for us requires us to have those two right over here. We have a, uh, I found this one on Amazon. I don't know if they have it in stock right now. That's a propane powered water heater. This guy right here is a Seaflow 120 volt. They do have a 12 volt one, but you wanna make sure you get the 110 or 120 volt pump. This one was from Amazon and it comes with this little guy right here, a little strainer. All these PEX lines that you see right here, I got those at Home Depot. This right here is a Home Flex three quarter gas line. You can buy them at one of two places, either through my paid Amazon link or good old trusty Home Depot. They have it right there as well, along with the connectors that you will need to get the job done. Moving right along to over here, we have our two 
water tanks. Let me switch sides. Give me two seconds. Oh my gosh. Okay. We have our two water tanks right here. These are undermount style uh, water tanks. They're from Class A Customs. Again, these, I found them. You can either go directly through their website or I'll link the Amazon link. They're undermount style water tanks. The reason I like the undermount style is because it has a little lip right here, almost like a little indention, and it grabs this leg right there, so then that way I don't have to uh, secure it too well. I just push this leg right to it, and it holds the tank in place, and I've never had an issue of them sliding around or breaking the pipes. Obviously, we see that still standing strong after four years. Long time, right? Oh my gosh. And right here, I use these foot flanges for my um, three compartment sink. This three compartment sink is a little bit interesting because it's very small, but it has everything that's required. It measures 60 inches from left to right, and it has two drain boards that are 15 inches on the left side and then the right side. And again, it has a three compartment sink, wash, rinse, sanitize. The model number for this is FE3-10-14. That's it, FE3-1014. Uh, I think, uh, to be honest, I scratched off because it's probably 15RL. I think that's how it ends. So FE3-1014-15RL. 10, 15 RL. Right here, a lot of people ask me this question. To be honest, I do not recommend, I saw this in Domino's, that's the only reason I picked this up. I do not recommend you guys have this little contraption. It literally is probably more work than just having the jugs that you can get from Gordon's. So from Gordon's you can get the two jugs that you need which are a sanitizer and the and the wash and it's a lot easier than to have this little contraption so i'm not going to cover it so don't get it that's just my recommendation it's just more work this guy right here is really cool because it's like a dish rack almost i can put my i really don't put my dishes here but i do put all my spatulas right here you have a speed rail the model number for this 600 sw36 from webstaurant so there we go, we covered this front part, a speed rail right here. Moving right along to the left side, we have our fire suppression system. This one, I had it installed by a third party. This is something that I did not do. The reason I didn't do it is because you need to get it tagged, just like you see here. I haven't used my food truck this year, so it's not hasn't been recertified, just so you guys know. This year I have not used my food truck, and I actually have been thinking Unofficially, officially, I'm kind of saying this here for you guys. I might be selling it uh, to move on to something else. I bought a snap-on truck that you guys are going to be seeing me convert here pretty soon. So that might be my next project. So as far as rolling burritos, I might, like I said, unofficial sale here. It might be up for sale. So if you guys are interested, again, you guys can send me an email, rollingburritosfoodtruck at gmail.com. I still haven't made up my mind, but, you know, it's, it's something that's on my mind. So this right here, I had it installed by Foster & Sons. You can buy it with the hood. I'm gonna cover the hood right now. The reason, I, like I said, that I didn't have it, in, I had it installed by a third party is because you need it tagged. So you wanna make sure that you have it tagged because they won't approve it from your fire department and then you won't be able to service the city that you're in. This right here is a carbon monoxide alarm. Down here, uh, we just passed it, I have a, a propane leak detector. And you wanna keep it low because if it smells propane, it starts beeping really loud. Like I said, a carbon monoxide detector. Down there, if you guys can see, that's a little contraption that services all my uh, cooking equipment right there. Kind of made it myself and I saw it on another food truck and I just copied it and it's been working well. I have my two cooking equipments right here. This is a 24 inch burner. This is a 36 inch griddle. Originally, these come prepared for natural gas. And when I bought them from Webstaurant, they have a, they call it a field convertible LP kit. So you have to switch these out to be LP, which is liquid, pro, liquid propane. But if you can buy the ones that are liquid propane ready, that'd be a little bit better investment for you. It's less work and the equipment is really nice too, but it's like a thousand bucks more. So just keep that in mind. But if I had to go back again, I would probably buy the ones that are LP ready. That's just my suggestion. Moving right along up here. This is hood mark is a hood. This one's a five footer. Now I've bought six footers, and the reason I buy six footers is because, is this a six footer or a five footer? Sorry, this is a six footer, so I bought seven footers. The reason I bought seven footers is because I can use six feet of equipment, because they want six inches on the left and the right of clearance for um, 
You guys can see it doesn't come straight to the fire cooking equipment. That's just what the city requires from us is six inches clearance on the left and six inches clearance on the right. So I went with a seven foot hood so it can give me six foot of cooking equipment. So that's how that works. Down here I have these food grade bins. I strap these down with, with little bolts. That way you can have like little storage instead of having cabinets. They don't allow us to have cabinets in DuPage County. So then I put these little storage bins, food grade container bins is what they're called. Moving along over here, let's wrap this up. Let's get this fast. You know what? When I built this truck, I put two switches thinking I was a cool guy. <clears throat> so sometimes I have to come all the way here to turn that guy on. I would never do that again. <laughs> oh, talking about lights. So I have, I use these six inch can lights. They're little slim pancake lights. If I were to go back again, I'm just giving you my suggestion to if I were to do it over again, I would use something like this. This is a four foot strip light and it changes colors. You can have uh, daylight and you can have soft white, whatever you want, nice and bright. The reason I like these is because when you put it up on here, boom, if this wasn't here like that, you can use this almost as an anchor point for your ceiling. That way you get a nice snug fit on all your ceiling pieces. But you can also use these little pancake lights. They're called slim LED can lights. They're like real thin, half, half inch thick. We use these a lot when we do remodel projects as well. Uh, that's just my, what I'm telling you guys to do there. Okay. Uh, on Hood Mart, what were they talking about? Oh, the hood. I bought this again from Hood Mart there in Ohio. And when I bought the window, I picked up the hood at the same time. They do make it with the fire suppression system as well. I did not buy it like that because as I, as I mentioned, you have to get it tagged anyways. So you might as well get it installed by somebody else and have it tagged. I think Cintas, what I found the other day is Cintas does tagging as well for fire suppression systems. Um, they come with these little baffles. You want to make sure that you keep these away from your fingers because they're real sharp. Um, so that's about it for the hood. Nothing crazy. You install it. Pretty easy peasy. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, what if I have the hood, but I don't have my stainless steel in yet? You can install the hood. You guys can see I use these little trim pieces right here. So if you guys put these little trim pieces, then you guys can put the hood and then put the ceiling pieces later. That's just a little option that you can have there. Again, I use stainless steel throughout my whole thing. It comes with this little variable switch for the hood. It just controls it just like that. You guys can see it. So there's that right there. I have a little magnetic thing right here for my knives and things like that, my little tongs. Over here I have my food warmer. This is a Cayenne made by Volrath. This one sucks up about 15 amps of power. So you need its own circuit just for this guy right here. It sucks up a lot of electricity because it's a food warmer. Sometimes when we do big caterings, we use this guy right here. It's what you see like at 7-Eleven. I found it from a guy that they had shut down. I don't know if you guys remember back then they used to have White Hen Pantry. Some of you young cats might not remember that. And then they, they got bought out by 7-Eleven. And uh, they used to have a lot of these little sandwich display cases right there. Over here, I have a six foot. Is it a five or six foot? Uh, I think it's a five footer. It's a five foot sandwich prep, tape, prep, uh, prep fridge. This is a true prep fridge. I found this one on Facebook Marketplace. It's not brand new. It was from a gyro place that they were closing and they were getting bought and they were taken over by an ice cream place. So what they wanted was freezers. They didn't need really like a prep fridge like this. So that's how I got a good deal on this one. It's like 1200 bucks or something like that. It's like a $3,000 fridge. So if you guys can go on Facebook Marketplace and find some good deals, make sure you do that. Right here, obviously you don't want to stick your finger in there. I wrapped, I, I took it out because I was explaining something for my ebook people. I send them a private video because I, I like to give them above and beyond. So like I said, if you guys want to buy the ebook, I'll put the link in the description. Something that I had may, uh, may mentioned on some of my earlier videos that I've never cleared up is I did not hook up the grounds to the neutral bar. I know I get that question quite a bit is, did you hook up the grounds to the neutral bar? So the neutral bar is right back here. If you guys can see that, I don't know if you guys can get closer right here. So this neutral bar, I had originally hooked up the grounds to it, but I did not do that. You cannot put a ground rod outside with a with um, with a food truck. Just so you guys know, I get that question a lot. Do you put ground rods? And uh, this is right here. I have two circuits that run. One of them goes straight to the food warmer, and the other one feeds the entire truck. 
So that's how that works. And I have them all connected right here. I kind of just pigtail them and then I connect it to the breaker. That's how I do that part. So if you guys want more explanation on that, uh, uh, like I said, you guys can buy the ebook. I answer each and every one question there more in detail. And then right here, we have a shelf. It's like a wall shelf, but I flipped it around. <laughs> Somebody gave me that, that hack, so to speak. And I put my aluminum foil right there and things like that. Other than that, that's pretty much it on this side. Over here, there's nothing really going on. Everything that's money making is on this side, except for the window, because that's where the real money is made, because that's where you take orders, and that's where you charge people either with a credit card or cash or however you do your business. But down here as well, I put these food container bins to hold storage. Something that I do use when I'm driving around to make sure that nothing moves around are these right here. These are called Task Quick Support Rods. You guys can see it holds the fridge and then I usually do it over there with the cooking equipment. That way the fridge doesn't move all over the place. That's something that I found works really well. What else can I tell you guys about here? All my tables are stainless steel from the top to the bottom. And like I said, I put these containers so it can be like cabinets. And, and everything that I do, I put these foot flanges. That way I can secure the tables to the floor. I have these anti-fatigue mats as well. That way, uh, that's kind of what they would have in a restaurant, just a regular restaurant also. But now that I'm here, let's wrap this video up. What you can use inside when you're building it are these three materials. That's what I know. There could be more, but the ones that I know are these. So I have FRP right here. It's just fiberglass reinforced plastic. And then you just peel this off. And then that gives you a nice clean surface. It's wipeable, it's kitchen ready. USDA health department approves it. It's phenomenal stuff. It's real cheap, inexpensive. This is a smooth one. They do make a bumpy one. If you've been to a restroom, maybe you've seen it there where they have a bumpy FRP, uh, but this is a smooth one. I bought this in Menards. I or a special ordered it. It was like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks a sheet, something like that. This guy right here is 304 stainless steel. Ooh, a little squeaky. So this right here, you have to just peel it off whenever you install it, and then that way you get a nice clean finish on your stainless steel. So that's 304 stainless steel mill finish. Mill finish means it almost looks like wood because it has like a wood grain. And then back here, last but not least, is this guy right here. I like this one because it's very easy to work with. It looks nice and it's real smooth. It's white aluminum. And this white aluminum, on the other trailers that I built, I used it on the ceiling. So it makes it real bright. Like when you use white in here in the trailer, if you guys can see it's, it sometimes feels maybe a little dark. For me it does. Um, white just makes it, you know, just feel bigger in the space. So I like to use it especially in the ceiling. If you guys, behind the cooking equipment, you want to use stainless steel. But everywhere else, you can use white aluminum. You can use FRP, depending on your budget. FRP is the most inexpensive one. White aluminum is right in the middle. And then stainless steel is the expensive guy. So with that, Hopefully that helps you out in this quick walk around. Hopefully it was quick. And I try to cover as much as I can and where I, where I ordered my things. That way you guys don't have to buy the spreadsheet if you guys don't want to. But if you do, again, send me an email, rollingburritosfoodtruck at gmail.com. These tables I bought them on Websterrants, the cooking equipment on Websterrants, the food container bins on Websterrants. So a lot of stuff on Websterrants because it's the easiest place to find restaurant stuff. But a lot of things I did find on Amazon, like outlets and switches, lights, and anything else that I'll link in the description. And again, if you guys wanna buy from there with the paid Amazon links, I do appreciate it. Frank Baltieras, How to Build Your Food Truck. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting. All your questions below, and I answer each and every one myself.